introduce yourself if you would for the camera. Hello, I'm John McCain. And I'd like to go over the financials today. Now, what I'd like to do, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the uh, payroll protection plan that the federal government offered a few months ago to help employers keep their employees, pay your mortgage, pay your utility bills, and that sort of thing. I'm bringing that up now. We'll call it PPP as we move forward. And uh, if you guys don't know, our church did apply and received those funds, uh, $144,000 uh, back in June. Uh, we have used some of those funds. We have not used all those funds. And as we get into the financials, you'll be able to see, uh, or I'll point out some of the areas where that money is being utilized. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, uh, this form here. Page four. Is there a page, number? page four. Now, what you're seeing here on page four is you see our income uh, money received in the top half of the form with a total income down on uh, line 27. And then you see expenditures on the bottom half of that page. Now, the first two columns you'll see running from top to bottom, uh, column C, that's what we budgeted for 2020. Uh, column D is our year-to-date budget. Column E is our actual. And then column F is last year's. So we're going to pay a little bit closer attention to E, which is our actual year-to-date. And you can see from line seven, undesignated funds, almost 45,000. Uh, building fund income, 130, 131, almost 132. Regular income, 283. And then you can look down these other lines. I won't read each one of them. You do see on line 27, our total of $834,000 of income so far this year. Now, we had mentioned that PPP, uh, we, some of those funds are in line seven under undesignated, and also some of that money is in line eight, which is the building. And when you see regular income, that is just the uh, stewardship giving uh, of the church. Let's move down to expenditures. Beginning down at line 30. And continue to look down line E at some of our expenditures there and how they relate to last year's to the right of that. And then if you move down to line 49, that's our total expenditures for the year are 860, uh, excuse me, 682. And on line 51, we have an overage of $152,000. Now, when we, I'd like to bring up a couple of budgeted items. If you look at uh, line 32, budget versus actual, so you're looking at column D versus column E, we have a little bit of increase there because we've had the joy of uh, Pastor Johnson being a little bit longer with us here <laughs> as we uh, sort through the senior pastor concerns. And then also, if you look at line 40, 
uh, we had budgeted 17,000 and we have 21,000 actual. And some of those increase in costs uh, are gonna come from uh, some of the expenses with offering a drive-in service, uh, maybe extra musicians, uh, communion cups, things such as that that add to it. Now, if you also look at uh, line 38, just above that, we have zero budgeted. That's the social ministry of 21. But if you look up at line 16, we have received 31. So we have a good surplus on that end. And overall, uh, again, 152. Now let's move on to the next page and I'll uh, open us up to a question. question. I am sorry, I wasn't able to catch that. <laughs> That's a, more of a building fund and we're gonna get to some of that on the balance sheet, which we'll go over next. Any other questions on this particular form? Or we can, after we go over the next one, we can come back to questions on this as well if you'd like. All right, the next form we're gonna look at is the uh, it's page five. It's kind of a very long page because there's a lot of information. <laughs> now what this is, is a balance sheet. So you're gonna see on this all of our cash balances up near the top. You're gonna see all of our individual funds uh, and what the idea of this pages here to do a little comparison between the end of last year and in where where we are through the end of June so it's kind of a, a year to date and I'll give some numbers to you I'm not going to read over every line I'll hit some of the highlights and then also if you look on the far right side is the year to date change so the first thing we'd look at is Okay, we're gonna look at line 18. Excuse me, we're gonna go a little bit higher up to our uh, total assets, cash assets, that's line 14. So you can see we went from 443 up to 626,000 on our cash. Uh, line 13, you'll see that's a city national PPP fund. So you're seeing 30,000 in that so we have that thirty thousand dollars yet to distribute over the next couple of months and what's happened is the congress keeps kind of pushing out when you need to use up all your uh, ppp funds so that's been a benefit to us uh, line 19 total assets uh, we're currently at 627 so we've had an increase there of one hundred eighty three thousand dollars Line 32, uh, liabilities 29,000, increase in 30, the majority of that being on line 31, which is the uh, PPP funds we have remaining. Our undesignated funds, uh, you're looking at uh, line 38, we've had an increase in $56,000, so that's an extremely good number. And if you look down at line 51, uh, total designated funds were up almost 23,000. And then line 60, that's going to be our vision, our building fund. So we're up almost $20,000 since the beginning of the year. Some miscellaneous uh, funds, evangelism, I won't read through all that. Uh, let's look down at 102. That's a school total. We've had an increase of almost $52,000. And if you look at the bottom line, uh, line 108, 
we've had an increase of a hundred and eighty three thousand dollars so we've uh, done extremely well so far amid all these difficulties uh, we have been helped with the PPP funds but uh, even outside of that uh, the congregation has been giving very generously and is really helping us uh, stay ahead and, and do well. I'd like to take any questions that you might have. The PP, I'm sorry. Uh, where and where are you pointing to? Uh, yeah. Where are the PPP funds going? I th believe was a question. Yeah. Line 30. Yeah. Oh, that. Okay, right there. And 30. Are you referring 13. to 31 or? And 13. Okay, what you're seeing, line 13 is actually a bank account. So that's uh, City National Bank. So that's where we applied and got the funds. Uh, through City National Bank. So the funds were kept in that account. Now, because it's a balance sheet, uh, what you're seeing on line 31, it's a liability because right now, technically, it's a, it's a loan. Now, once the funds are used, I mean, there's a lot of paperwork that will be filled out to uh, uh, show uh, the government that we've, our SBA, I should say, that we've used uh, money for payroll, we use money for, uh, uh, let's say, the payment, mortgage, uh, uh, mortgage uh, also on electric bills and such as that. So what you're seeing is just where the money's sitting in the account, and then uh, line 31, it's, it's a liability right now, but as we use it, you'll see money come out of that liability area. Uh, yes, you'll see both lines go away eventually, yes, as the money's spent. Yes. Any more questions? All right. Thank you. Pastor, I'll give to you. The pastor will give you back your paperwork. And Thank you, John. Yes. So, some good news there on the financial side. Um, so regarding the financial report as presented, do we have a motion to approve? Do we have a second? All in favor? Green card. Green, green card. All in favor, green card. Very good. Anyone not in favor, red card. Looks like 100%. Thank you. All right, next. Election to church council by written ballot. Recommendation made by the church council to approve the election of Marty Baggs, Kathy Bloom, Cynthia Cannon, Kim Rowland to serve on the church council. Oh, we were going to do a written ballot. Uh, we have we have four people for four positions, so this is just purely vote. These were all recommended by the council, uh, and I'll, re I'll repeat the names: Marty Bags, Kath Bloom, Cynthia Cannon, and Kim Rowland. Roll. So, all in favor? Green card. Okay. Very good, thank you. And not in favor, red card. All right, thank you very much. 
Next, we have the 2019-2020 day school year reports by Dr. Madeline Spiegel and Pastor Peacock. No. Good evening, everybody. I uh, always love to show you guys the videos and to have you hear the kids singing um, on that video. But uh, unfortunately, can't do that today. Maybe I'll send one out via campaign so you guys can see that. Uh, but we do have some uh, pictures there for you guys to see the great faces on the kids. Um, I think everybody would think I'd be totally crazy if I didn't say that the uh, 1920 school year was a little odd. Um, <laughs> we, uh, you know, had to close after spring break uh, because of COVID. We went immediately to uh, virtual uh, learning, which was very successful, um, had our parents and, and kids really respond positively to it. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it did all end up well. Um, we did have our first graduating class. Actually, I got to stand right here on May 29th and, and graduate our first two seniors, uh, which was so exciting. And um, both of them are going into the military, so we're, we're very proud of them for that. Um, so uh, we you know, had, a, had an exciting year, that's for sure. Um, while we were on property, we still did a lot of our normal, um, you know, uh, caring for others through our chapel offerings and, and service projects and had of all, all of our great events, um, but a lot of that obviously got uh, cut short. But um, we're ready for this year. Um, this year, uh, we, we do intend to uh, be on campus or have virtual for the, the parents that do not want to be on campus. We are going to be 100% at the Southside campus. Uh, due to our size, uh, it is just uh, physically impossible, I guess you can say, and, and financially impossible to, to have the two campuses open and to provide the, the high quality service that we like to provide and to build those relationships with the kids and families. Um, so a couple of years ago, we had talked about combining the two campuses. It just wasn't right. Uh, but with everything that's happening with the COVID and, and everything else, um, we feel that this is the right time. So we are currently under construction, and thanks to Dennis Fay for leading that up to us, uh, making the annex into two large rooms instead of four rooms, uh, making an office space. Um, all of our uh, elementary parents that were out here at the Lakeshore are on board with us going there. Um, they all, you know, as much as they love this property, uh, just as much as we do, um, they didn't come here for the property. They came to the school for how we work with the kids and how we help them grow uh, academically and, and emotionally and spiritually. And so they said, okay, you're gonna be at Southside, we'll go there. So um, I, mean, I think that's a testament to our teachers and staff as to the quality of care that they provide that the families would be willing to, to drive the extra distance to go wherever they're at. So, um, we're grateful for, for all of um, our, our staff that, that put forth that effort to, to, uh, in this ministry to bring the kids, uh, to grow the kids to God's uh, uh, liking. Um, let's see. Do you think of anything else? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any questions? I know y'all are sitting in your car, so I don't want to go on forever. I could go on and on about the school, but I, I don't want to do that. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Chairperson Sue Carter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somewhere close, you'll know if you can. Good evening. Can you hear me? 
volume. You keep talking. Keep talking. It's, it's can you on. hear me now? Yes, yes, you can. Okay, good evening. My name is Sue Carter. I am the chair of the call committee, uh, the current call committee. Uh, first off, we wanted to apologize for not keeping you better informed over the past few months. The, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has shut us down for a while, just as, as it has done for many of you all. Uh, we were unable to meet in person or conduct interviews. Um, however, we are finally back to meeting together. We're moving forward and we'll begin the interview process in the next few weeks. The original chair of the call committee, as many of you know, was Gary Kovar Jr., who had to step down uh, mid-June due to follow, uh, family medical issues. And uh, I have stepped into the position midstream, and I, uh, we've been striving to keep the committee on track amid the virus. Uh, we understand that there is some concern regarding moving forward with the sale of the Lakeshore property without having the call process completed and a new senior pastor in place. However, during this call process, you, the members of the congregation, have shown us that the missions of Shepherd of the Woods will continue, regardless of the senior pastor or whether or not we have the Lakeshore property. Your participation and your passion to do God's work has truly been remarkable. We continue to ask for your prayers and your support during the call process. Patience and discernment does not necessarily come naturally to some of us. So please lift us up for God's blessings. We're, we remain on his path and on his time. Thank you. Is that your husband beeping at you? I, I did your husband beeping at you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. New business, Lakeshore land sale. Recommendation by the church council to offer for sale the entire Lakeshore location and authorize the church council to negotiate the terms at fair market value and conditions of the sale. The council is authorized to proceed with contracts related to such sale. Any discussion, any questions? I, I do have one question, Pastor, that uh, Bob Bachman asked about. Yes. And he said, uh, could we put in some kind of a minimum as far as what the sale of this land will go for? Um, we do have Fran here, who is our advisor. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can give some comments, and then Fran will clean up anything I've said. Um, we can put any number on it we want, but what we're going to get is what somebody is going to buy it for. Um, the amazing amount of um, uh, calculations that go into uh, the value of a piece of property is extraordinary, and it's what Colliers has been doing uh, with us for two years. Uh, just. Uh, to summarize uh, what we're asking about, um, f we've had the property for sale, a portion of it, for two years. And there was some expectation that developers might be wanting to come in, buy the entire property, subdivide it into one acre lots. And so whether it was seven acres or 12 acres, that would be uh, a good way for a profit to be made by them and the value of the property to be realized by us. Uh, that went on for two years, uh, and in that time we had one letter of intent from one of our neighbors who had a, uh, an idea in mind uh, for a storage area, um, and ultimately that fell through. And he withdrew that offer and uh, is doing some other things as he's looking for property. As the sale continued and people came to the property, we did have people who noticed, uh, obviously, that there's more than the acreage. They, they would come on the property and they knew it was ours. This is our property and where we showed them the property for sale. And uh, there were two different groups uh, that were interested 
uh, in considering the 40 acres. And that is not, we did not have that authorization to be able to do that, uh, but knowing that the council congregational meeting was coming up, uh, we thought let's at least hear what the interest is and what the value might be. Uh, Bob's right to be concerned that we get the best value out of the property and by what we are able to calculate, um, 40 acre sale of the property gives us benefits in a number of ways. Uh, we, have, we have not shared a lot of the information. Uh, perhaps you didn't even know Amir, uh, who we worked with for six months or 18 months or whatever length of time, um, uh, who was interested in it, but ultimately that fell through. We do have um, a company that is uh, interested in perhaps the entire 40 acres, and the council went back and forth with that group uh, indicating uh, not what it would be sold for, but what the council would feel comfortable recommending it to the congregation. So, so we didn't say, oh, it's worth that much money and if you pay it, you can buy it because we don't have that authority. Uh, but um, we, we asked them to be serious about what they were purchasing, what value we believe the land had, uh, and uh, the, the entire property had. Uh, and it came pretty close. We're not exactly sure where it is right now. Uh, it may continue, uh, but um, the, the, I, I think I can say the estimated uh, value was about $4 million. Now, if you were around back 18 years ago or 16 years ago when we bought the property, uh, we bought it for $1.6 million. Now we've done infrastructure development, we've added the faith center, we've added the modulars, and therefore we would expect it to increase in value. But in reality, that isn't always a value for people. Uh, for those of you who are around at the time of the sale, uh, attempted sale of Southside, we had one letter of intent, which uh, a condo guy was going to come in and develop condominiums. Um, therefore, any construction we had done on the South Side property was a negative value in that it was going to have to be removed for him to be able to do his construction. So in the same way, we built a building that serves us, Sunday school, worship, it's group meetings, uh, but that may or may not be of value to somebody else who buys the property. Uh, the same way, the lake is a beautiful asset for us, uh, but primarily is a retention pond for anyone who would buy the property. So there are many different calculations that go uh, into the uh, final determination of what that land, what this land is worth. Um, the council did not make this decision lightly. Uh, all of us know the beauty of this property, um, but we also know the most beautiful thing we can do is show our feet. You know, uh, beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And the gospel is what we're after. And what we've recognized after 14 years is that this property is very difficult to develop as a congregation. Our maximum, if you went to the forums, I'm not going to repeat it, but that information is out there. Uh, the uh, largest worshiping attendance we had back about four years ago was 90 worshipers a week, and that held for two years and now down to about 50. It's just a very difficult uh, thing. Uh, whereas there are properties that we might look at if we have resources from the sale of this one where the growing areas a little bit further south uh, might be something that we are able to develop and uh, expand uh, with the gospel in ways we cannot do that here. So recognizing that and also very seriously recognizing the cost. We bought 40 acres with a dream that was going to use it all uh, clearly, we do not 
have a way to develop a nursing home, retreat center, high school for the school, which was what that property was going to do. Uh, and therefore it has become an expense that's very difficult for us to sustain. Uh, $18,977 every month. Your generosity has allowed us to do that. Um, this last month, we did have a difficulty in that the uh, building fund donations uh, was a little less than 10,000, which means we were about $9,000 uh, in the hole that we needed to take from previous giving. So we do have a vision fund with funds in there and can do that, but uh, we basically have about nine years of mortgage uh, left to pay. Uh, it'll be 20, well, 11 years, 20, 2031 is when the mortgage would be paid off. So uh, that's the reason it was brought to you. And uh, the recommendation is authorizing the council, again, uh, for fair market value, the best values that we can get for the property uh, to sell it at that time. So. Uh, that, that's kind of a summary of what brings us here. There are microphones. If anybody has any questions, if you didn't make it to a forum, some of this may seem a little odd. We will certainly all miss the Lakeshore property, but for uh, all those years, uh, it has been a beautiful asset. People were baptized here and married here and um, a question. Yes, a question. Okay, John Rossetti, our president, is bringing the speaker. That the council should put a minimum amount in the fair market was projected around four million. But will that fair market value hold in a sale. If we get a sale for it, I think that the council should be have a minimal amount that would be acceptable to the congregation. Okay. I don't know if Fran wants to address John right there. Um, Fran is our person who knows about minimums and maximums and values, that it'd be helpful to have Fran uh, respond to that. This is Fran Peppis, uh, one of the vice presidents at Collier's Dickinson, and who has been leading us through this. Good evening, I'm Fran Peppis, and it's only raining on my car, I think, because when I came up here, the sun is shining. So, uh, thank you for having me this evening. Uh, fair market value is subjective until you have an appraisal done on the property. And we, didn't, we, we opted not to spend the money, which would be probably north of about four or $5,000, to have an appraisal done on the property. Based on our experience, and, and being able to run the numbers as we have for the last 47 years, uh, we felt confident in providing the council with a number that we thought was fair market value. When a buyer comes to the property, he's going to have an appraisal done uh, because the lender will require that. And based on that appraisal, we will have a definitive fair market value for the property. That time, we'll take that back to council 
and ask for approval. If the fair market value based on the appraisal is higher, we won't know that. But if the fair market value based on the appraisal is lower, the buyer may come back and try to renegotiate. Okay. Other questions of Fran or about the sale? Yes, Art. Do we have a firm offer? Current offer. We have discussion. Well, Fran can tell you. We have a non-binding letter of intent that we are negotiating on right at the moment with a, uh, a, a business that's been in this marketplace probably for about 50 plus years. And they have, they have seriously considered the property, have made a, uh, a, a non-binding letter of intent, which is to say they have made an offer on the property. We've been negotiating. They came in extremely low at first. Uh, we managed to get them up to our fair market value, close to our fair market value. And we're considering, uh, they are considering that offer at uh, around three three million nine hundred eighty 